All right, so for those who don't know about the Darkest Dungeon, um, the Darkest Dungeon is about making the best. Uh, the most out of a bad situation. Quests will fail or must be abandoned. Heroes will die, and when they die, they stay dead. Progress auto saves constantly, so actions are permanent. The game expects a lot of you. How far you will push your adventurers, how much you're willing to risk in the your quest to restore the blah blah. Oh, they ran away. Basically, heroes stay dead. Uh, <laughs> uh, and every decision we make is permanent. Um, so. Radiant is way too forgiving. Um, honestly, if you want to get the most out of this game, I do feel like starting off with Darkest. Um, Stygian is no forgiveness. Uh, I mean, just play the game on Darkest your first playthrough. Um, I'm not doing Stygian yet. I don't feel that, that confident. Um, I haven't beaten the game yet. I've had enough experience to understand the mechanics and stuff like that. But uh, I've reset this game a few times just because I really enjoy the early game aspects of it. A little bit more than the end game stuff. Uh, but uh, we're going to try and push through and see how well we can do. Um, I'm going to do my best to teach players. I know there's a lot of people that are playing it now um, on Game Pass. Uh, and we're just going to see if I can either help you guys learn a little bit and give you some of the beginner strategies in the moment um, versus a bunch of different research. Um, plus, I kind of find the gameplay entertaining, even though it's just like a little side scroller. Um, so we're going to start off. Move over here, and throughout hallways there is, uh, you can use your mouse to click around, um, there's random little events that'll happen in these hallways, so right now this is all scripted, um, this is our very first battle. So combat is turn based, uh, you click on your heroes. Um, so first tip off the bat is if you can, stun, if you can't, and inflict some kind of status effect. Um, so Dimus is a highwayman. He has a bleed effect. Um, I personally won't use this long term for this guy. Um, he's better at uh, there's a spell um, or move called Reposts, and you'll probably abuse that a lot. Um, now, this guy has two. Da is going to take two damage from bleed. He will. Uh, he has two one health remaining. So no matter what he does, he will die. Or, um, or on his turn, he's going to die from that bleed damage. So. If I know that an enemy is going to die, I'm going to heal or buff or attack something else. Uh, since he's the only guy left, um, you're just so, so like let's say I'm just why would like I'll buff myself and mark, mark myself here because I know that this guy is going to die as soon as his turn pops up. So you really want to watch those status effects. Um, 500 gold is pretty good for that. All right, interactive objects are called curios. Um, while exploring, you will find interactive objects. Uh, press W to investigate, and we'll look at this tent. So, there is certain items that can you you can use on curios to get better results. I don't have them all memorized, but I have a general knowledge of it. Um, I did not realize this for a long time. I sh I was playing on the Xbox. I was learning the game on the Xbox, and uh, font is way smaller. So you can drag. You can use items on curios. Um, so we're not we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna check inside the tent, and that's a lot of money. There is much to be found in forgotten places. All right. So again, this is a little bit of a scripted battle. So this guy in the back, usually the backliners you want to try and deal with. This guy takes up two spaces. So my paladin-looking guy, Crusader, is not going to be able to attack this back row just based on his move set. Um, so. My general again, knowledge is if I can't if I can't attack. Uh, I'm sorry. You want to stun first. If I can't stun, I want to bleed. But this pistol shot will deal five to nine. I can probably kill this guy in one to two turns if I'm lucky, um, assuming nothing goes wrong. And then I can stun this guy. So I'm gonna actually shoot this guy with the pistol and hopefully stun the big guy. So that way I have one less attack to deal with next turn. So blanket fire. He's done. Alright, now, I can kind of roll the dice right here. I did a lot of damage. Um, this move will deal 3 to 5 damage uh, to both of those targets. I can take the gamble and be like, hey, uh, shoot it. I, it's a basically a 1 in 3 chance that I don't kill him. So I got a 66% chance to, to kill this guy and still deal damage with this. And if I do that... Um, I actually have a debuff this guy too, which will allow me to crit him better. 
Um, it's early. I some players might YOLO it. Um, I am just going to guarantee I kill this guy because I don't want to. I just want to make sure. Um, corpses when they die they block uh, paths, which is another reason why I wanted to kill that guy first. Because if this big guy, I'd have to kill him and then his corpse. All right. So he there was a little icon right here. He had dodge, uh, stun resistance. Um, because I stunned him last turn. They do that so that way you can't just stun lock people consistently, but he is back down again to stun. And it's a 50% chance to stun. Um, it deals 4 to 7 damage versus my normal attack would deal 7 to 14. I'm not going to kill this guy for another round, or at least another two rounds. So there's no point of me just focusing on damage when I can avoid taking damage. So I'm going to try and stun him again. And... You're, you're more concerned, because everything is permanent death, you are more concerned on sa preserving your guys than killing others. And usually the best offense is a good defense. Um, so if you can kill people really fast, that's great, but knowing that I wasn't going to be able to kill him, I don't want to take that extra damage, even though this is just this tutorial. Um, open vein. Uh, so this is that bleed move. Um, again, if I can't kill, uh, stun it, which he's already stunned, I'm going to inflict a status effect on it. Um, give him bleed. It's going to deal an extra 2 damage per round. Not that big, considering this guy's so beefy, but still. Um, now, let's see if I can hit really well with this. This is 7 to 14. Literally the minimum damage. Um, I'm going to try and bleed him again. And he should die now. The bleeds stack, so he's going to take 4 damage. He only has 4 health. and Or, sorry, 3 health. And in this case, if I was in an actual dungeon, I would try healing up my party and doing something. Because I know he's going to die, and he's the last guy. So, I'm just going to finish him. Size alone does not and really good loot for the first time. Alright, completing quests. Once you've completed a quest, you can return to town or just click the quest so you don't have to need to stand around the dungeon to exit. Alright, complete quest and dungeon. So, you have the option to continue adventuring and we can take a look at this chest. Bandit trapped chest. Something doesn't quite look right in this one. So that's pretty telling that this is a obvious trap chest. Not all of them are that obvious, um, but you can do stuff to uh, uh, usually help reduce that if you have specific items. Um, some things you can use unlock with a key and it'll not be trapped anymore, but um, I'm just curious if this will work. So I'm going to snuff out that torch. Um, and when you do that, your loot increases. So at the end of the dungeon, if there's like a chest or something or extra curios that you want to grab, you're better off snuffing your torch and then trying to open it. This is just purely trapped. I don't get anything from it. Alright. So, um, Reynold and Dismas are healed, are leveled up. And he gained Eldritch Slayer. Plus 10 accessory, uh, accuracy and a crit against Eldritch enemies. Uh, that's really good, I think, for the Cove. They're mostly Eldrics. Um, we're going to be going to the runes first, very likely. This squalid hamlet and we get back to our uh, golds now. So, we're in the hamlet. Um, this gives you your quest goals, and there's a lot of quest goals. And this is kind of why I actually haven't been able or beaten this game yet. Um, one, because I was kind of looking forward to doing a series, but two, I, there's a lot to this game. Um, I have a lot of I had a lot of hours on my very first playthrough, and again, I, I use that as kind of like my playthrough run to learn the game, and then I'm I'm working on the commitment of actually beating through it, and I'm having a blast. I love this game so far, but I just wanted to see if I can pass my knowledge down to you guys. Um, again, I don't know everything, but I've watched a lot of YouTubers, and I haven't seen any good on the spot playback so i'm hoping i can help you guys out and we, we can figure out the game together all right so i gotta check out all these places stagecoach uh this is where i get heroes in um we are definitely gonna get the plague doctor and the vestal um plague doctor is probably my favorite unit um it focuses on stunning backline enemies which are usually the most dangerous and consistent plague damage is amazing against most bosses um, the Vestal uh, is your healer. She is your primary healer in the game. Uh, she is going to literally s just power through a lot of the dungeons, especially when you get healing items with her. Um, so, 
you can upgrade all your st uh, stuff too. Um, so we can increase the number of heroes available. We can upgrade the size of the roster. We are going to get the Stagecoach Network um, and have an extra hero or two coming in at the next chance. Um, Ancestor Memorialers, this is just uh, for the campaign. I am not going to go over, I'm going to skip a lot of the campaign stuff and dial or the dialogue for it because I want you guys to be able to experience the game on the spot. Uh, trinkets. So, really, not really stuff I need personally. Um, I'm, I really don't think you need to buy trinkets. I've, I've bought in maybe one or two when I was first starting off because I didn't think I, don't, I didn't know any better. But I just don't think it's needed. Um, I'm sure there's an argument, and I'm sure there's better stuff. Again, I haven't focused on upgrading this at all because I find pretty good trinkets, and honestly, it, you'll find so many trinkets in the game that you just you don't know what to do with them. I'm often selling a lot of the common ones. Um, if you ever find like an ancestral or a rare or something in there that you feel like you can actually use, then jump on it. It's worth checking every time, but I personally haven't needed it. Um, let's see. So we went to Abbey. Uh, so Graveyard, Fallen Heroes, anyone who dies goes into here. And that's it. So we are going to... We don't need to focus on anything else right now. We're just going to go and embark on our next quest. And we're going to get our party set up. Alright, so. Party set up. A lot of... How these little dots... Were. I'm going to go from the top to the left. Uh, top left and then to the right. So Quirks... Yellows are good quirks. These are bonuses. Um, red are bad quirks that piss you off. Uh, so, uh, for example, God-fearing, he will only pray to reduce stress. Stress is the biggest killer in this game. I have died... My characters have died more to panic and stress than anything. Um, so, keeping their stress down is a lot more important than I, gave, I thought it would be when I was starting off this game. Kleptomaniac, you want to get rid of this right away. It is... Probably the one of the worst negative quirks uh, because he'll just jack your stuff when you're in the middle of the dungeon. Um, so we can't get rid of it right now, but yeah. Uh, base stats, health is obvious. Dodge, um, when an enemy attacks, I believe dodge, you, you roll a dice. Like the game basically rolls dice for you, which is I like. I'm a D&D &D nerd, so. Um, and adds the modifier to it so it really feels like DD um in a sense uh and the dodge has a chance to basically block that protection points this reduces in actual damage that you don't dodge speed i think it's like the game rolls like a d8 or something and adds your speed modifier to that roll and that basically determines your initiative accuracy mod uh i feel like accuracy is like the second most important skill in the game other than health uh, because you'll see your characters miss a lot, especially in higher stuff when everyone's dodge skill is hot or like high. So anytime I can try and get an accuracy mod, I will add that. I will do that. Um, I feel like accuracy is more important than actual raw damage. Um, crit, crit. I mean, it's just like you can double your damage uh, dice basically, um, and then the damage. Uh, so it's really important to know how much damage output you put out when you put it out. Uh, so you always want to look at your moves and figure out the enemy's damage output. Uh, combat skills. So, uh, these two yellow dots up here, that is the position, or the preferred position of your character. So, Reynold is a frontliner um, at the moment. Uh, he will only, his moves will only work in those two positions. If I put him in the back two, he is useless. Um, his preferred targets, he will only target the things in the front two. Uh, so that's why earlier I had to kill the big um, big guy before I could get to the little guy if I needed to. Um, Dismas is my... I personally, I think highwaymen are awesome. They, this, like, when you get, later on, you'll get um, Duelist Advance and Point Blank Shot. And uh, it is such a good combo. I, it's awesome. Um, Dre X, Drax, Dre X. Um... He is... Did I get the good one? I did not. So, Blinding Gas is, like, literally one of the best moves you can get. Uh, you want to get that right away. Um, it kind of sucks I didn't start with that. In Incision's probably the worst thing to go into the runes with, too. But we'll make do. Um, and I didn't get the heal, either. So, that's a little unfortunate. So, this is probably the worst Plague Doctor I've ever gotten. Uh, but he's a wheeled adventurer. 
he gains a bonus damage which his damage i don't really care about it's not really his you're not really dealing damage with this guy you are debuffing and um putting status effects on enemies um he has one less speed yeah this is hands down the worst plague doctor i've ever had all right Nalen. hopefully she she's an eldritch slayer so again i that actually doesn't really matter she's mostly i use her mostly as a healer but you want to use her as preventative damage which this is probably one of the worst healers i've gotten too because she doesn't actually have the stun that i want and so we're not off to a good start as far as teaching the game i would it, if anybody got this layout um i don't have the stun from dre i don't have the stun for Nalen. i would hands down tell you just re-roll the game start over um I'm going to deal with the cards I dealt, um, but again, she's a backliner as well, and uh, we'll cross that bridge. Uh, we can make it work, it's just, this actually makes the game a lot harder, because I have two less stuns. Um, so let's figure out what happens. Alright. You want to take different su uh, supplies, depending on what region you're going, how long the quest is, and your own preferences, but always bring food and torches. For your first short quest, try bringing at least eight food and four torches. So, short quests... I kind of agree with that. I will actually end up usually bringing 10, um, with the exception of this first quest, because it's kind of scripted. Um, just because I like being safe, and I often get screwed over by um, random hunger checks, and you'll see that later. Shovels, you always want at least, in, in my opinion, if you're a short, you need at least two shovels anywhere you go. If you're in a medium, I always bring four. Um, again, and it, it, it sometimes you won't need any of them, um, sometimes you'll need all four, but the fact, if you have to dig and you don't have a shovel, it's the worst thing ever. In this one, because I remember how the script works on this guy, I'm not going to bring the shovel to the first mission. Um, I am going to bring a medicine herb. Um, I don't think I even need the key. I'm just going to bring a couple torches. Um, and I think the game recommends four, but I'm, I'm going to bring five just because, you know, I'm going to bring six because I don't have anything. <laughs> bring a bandage too, I guess. All right, so we're going to embark and hopefully don't fuck this up. All right, so we're going to check here. It's a good look. It's a pretty straightforward map. We're going to head north. Get a torch. Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the fool. All right, so I am going to click a torch before we go in. So, radiant light. Um, I have a better chance of surprising the monsters, and at this point, I really need that. All right, so they are surprised, which means I get all four of my moves before they get to do anything. Um, I am going to just focus on some damage at the moment. We're gonna get this back guy. Um, skeletons don't have bleed, so afflicting a status of the bleed effect doesn't actually do anything, so we're just going to try and pistol shot this guy and kill him off. Um, he is smite, deals uh, extra damage against unholy. These things are considered unholy. Um, that effect is right there, you can't see it. Unholy. Um, and my weapon would deal 8 to 15 against this guy, it's an automatic kill with this guy. With Easy enough. Alright, so, unlock Stronghold, a strong box sits on the cold stone floor, contents unknown. We don't have anything that would bonus, we would bonus for opening this, so we're just going to open this and grab that shovel. Um, I knew that, that's the reason I actually didn't take the uh, shovel and the thing, because I knew I'd get one and there's one thing to clear. The game kind of prepares you for that. Um, busts, those are to upgrade our town. Um, I don't know why people want busts of stuff, but we're going to continue. Even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. This is not going to kill her, um, but again, we don't have a stun. 
Oh, okay, it will kill her. I had to roll really high for that. Alright. Um, Noxious Blast. So, again, normally I would say try and stun one. Um, Reynold, as long as he hits, he's going to kill one of those. So I'm just going to try and stun this guy. Or not stun, poison him. And poison is amazing. It deals 5 damage per round. These things have only 8 health, so he's going to die. Um, that's not, I was going to say, can I kill both? But no. Reynold is not going to kill him in one shot like I thought he would. Um, this guy is going to die. He's going to take 5 damage at the beginning of his round. He has 2 health, so there's no point of attacking him. Um, so we're just going to go and try and kill this guy. Alright, um, that doesn't matter because it's going to die. Now, I'm really hoping my Vestal, okay, my Vestal did get to go first before anything else, so I want to make sure I heal her up because I know this is going to die. There's no point of me dealing damage to it. I'd rather heal up my party, or her for specifically. Is the weapon that cuts on its there own. we go. Alright, scouting. Um, if you have things to help you scout areas, it is probably the best. Um, so we are going to go up and get that treasure room. Porch is fading. Um, so, I am going to, you know what, I'm actually going to come back for that, um, and I'll show you why. So, I'm going to add one torch just so I don't hopefully get totally fucked here. Okay, cool, that was, I, I really didn't expect that, it's a plus two chance to surprise them at 50% of your torch snuffness. Um, I didn't expect this at all, so this is kind of nice. Alright, I was saying, backline, biggest threat, she stresses your people out, she's probably going to focus on, they, for what, they always target, I feel like they always target the ones who are the most stressed, um, so the AI are pretty smart with this, um, so I want her dead right away. Um, pistol shots, that was awesome. Uh, so when they crit, uh, they get a bonus, um, usually for a round or two, but it's always worth it. Um, we're going to throw Noxious Blasts at... He's a bigger threat. He will cause bleed, too. Um, hopefully, Reynolds will be able to one-shot the skeleton. He didn't do me proud last time, but... Um, you know, let's help him out a little bit. I wish I could see what Reynolds' damage is going to be. So, Judgment. And we'll put it on... Yeah, we'll put it on Skelly Boy. That should guarantee the one hit from Reynolds. Uh, 6 to 12 damage, so... Okay. One falls. And you want to focus out on... You want to try and clear as many of them as you can before their turn. Alright, bleed resist. Alright. Okay, so, the reason I did that is I'm going to snuff this. Terrible and because I'm doing that, this chest will actually give me... Oh, Okay, well, I thought this chest would actually give me better loot, uh, but I was wrong. So we're going to go down here, and hopefully this bag will give me better loot now that I've darkened it up. Oh! Neato! Alright, so, this is Kleptomaniac. So, because he is a Klepto, all that stuff that was just in there, I don't get to keep for myself. He took it from me. So, get rid of Klepto as soon as possible, otherwise you deal with shit like that. Um, let's see if that happens again. We're in pitch black, so... I think he just took it again! Yeah, so he just took all that stuff again. So those busts are really valuable. Uh, we just lost a lot of stuff because of this Klepto who doesn't care about the party. The match is struck. So. A Get rid of Kleptomaniac. Ah, okay. Alright, um... So, backline. Um... He's pretty tanky. I'm, I'm not gonna. Do, I don't think I'm gonna be able to kill him this round uh, with just this guy. I can't stun him either. I'm the blight might do enough damage. So pistol shot deals four to eight again, or five to nine against him. Uh, blight will. Uh, my plague doctor's blight, I believe, always does five. So and it'll deal like one damage. So that's 
nine. I'd have to max roll to kill it. Um, so what I can do instead is start to weaken these guys, or I can put the weak a uh, debuff on the or attack on the entire. I'm gonna deal damage to everybody, which I'm gonna miss horribly. Accuracy. Um, Noxious blast. We're gonna play the back line and get him a little weaker. Um. This is where the stun would be really nice, but I'm not going to get that. So we're going to focus that. And hopefully, if we want to one-shot one of these guys, that'd be cool. It's 7 to 13, so it's about a 50-50 chance. Okay. That's 4 damage. Blocks, good dodge. Alright, uh, we're just going to throw another thing like that at him. And he should die now by himself. He's going to take 4 damage. And he's got 6. Okay, oh, so he didn't, he actually resisted it. That's annoying. That's annoying too. Uh, let's try. Okay. Now he should die. There we go. Alright, so, um, Reynold here, he took our original Holy Water, and Holy Water does, if I remember this correctly, this either this reduces your stress, and it gives you a bonus if you have Holy Water to it, so we're going to drop that there, and that healed up her stress a little bit, and health, uh, so these fountains are really valuable, I always try and keep at least one or two Holy Waters on me, uh, just because when you find the fountains that make it work, it's so worth it. So, these guys, traps. You can clearly see on the map that this is a trap. They are little grates or puddles or something that looks obvious as a trap. I didn't realize how to uh, disarm them for a while. So, on each of the characters' buffs, they all have a percentage chance to uh, disarm the trap. So, these are 60. Uh, she's uh, uh, Drake's, the pl Plague Doctor, is 60. My Highwayman is 90. The dungeon's almost over, so I'm going to try and reduce the stress of him by having him disarm this trap a little bit. Um, he's not the optimal one to do it with. In the in consoles, I believe you hit A or X or something like that, whatever one of those two action buttons are. Um, I'm, yeah, he didn't do it. Uh, so you just click on the trap when you're close enough, and it'll work. I took the gamble. I would have gained loot, lost eight stress if uh, I if he did disarm it, um, but I took twenty stress because I failed. Not the end of the world, but it was the gamble I was willing to make for a 60% chance. Lots of food. Um, one other thing before we get into the next little room, too. Oh, hunger check. Okay. So, again, here's where normally I, uh, I... This is why I bring a lot of food. I hit these a lot, I feel like. I've seen other streamers, and they don't nearly hit... Uh, they don't get as nearly as I do, I feel like, but I don't know. So... You can also feed your guys to heal up. That's basically the equivalent of your potions. So bringing extra food in case you don't have a Vestal or you don't really have a good healer is really helpful just because of that. Uh, we're going to go through here. And, you know, I'm going to pop this torch just because it's my last one. And we're going to click here. So this is an empty room. Um, it completes the dungeon if I want, but I want to continue adventuring. I want to see if there's anything else in this little dungeon because we need resources. We're at full health. My stress is really low. The only thing I have against me is this fucking giant rubble, and if I wanted to clear this, this adds stress a lot to it. I am not going to clear it because I don't want that extra stress, so we're going to just leave. So we got gold, we got this, our guys all level up. Um, so when you beat a mission, for whatever reason, when you are successful, you have gain, have a chance to gain random good and bad perks, and I don't understand why you get negative perks for being victorious, especially if you finish with full health. It doesn't make sense to me. I really wish there was like a mod that would fix that or something. But anyway, this is like that's the first level of the game. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I was trying to go over and explain everything as best I can. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you guys so much.